Good morning to those joining us uh, and welcome. We'll get started here in just a moment. Good morning and hi to everybody. We'll go ahead and kick it off now. Welcome to today's webinar, what you need to know about FIRA certification for UWB enabled devices. This presentation is co-hosted by Comark, the FIRA Consortium and Lightpoint. My name is Adrian Foster from VTM Group and I'll be your moderator for today. To start with some logistics throughout the presentations, please make sure to submit your questions in the Q&A box that you see at the bottom of your screen. Towards the end of the webinar, we're going to have a live Q&A session with all of our panelists, so be sure to submit your questions there. This presentation is being recorded and an on-demand version of the webinar will be available in a few days to everyone. I'm now happy to introduce our panelists. Today you'll hear from the following speakers. Ardavan Tirani. Ardavan is currently representing Meta Reality Labs at FIRA, where he is also serving as co-chair of the Requirements and Marketing Working Groups. He has more than 20 years of experience in the wireless industry, serving in a number of technical leadership and executive roles. Then we have Mitch Kedrick. Mitch is the FIRA Certification Program Manager and is responsible for managing all aspects of FIRA's device certification program. He has more than 20 years of product development, testing, and certification experience in the wireless telecommunications industry. Then we have Eve Dinell. Eve is a Senior Product Marketing Manager at Lightpoint, who's responsible for wireless connectivity test systems. She has over 15 years of experience working in test and measurement. Following her, we have Patrick Stiercheck. Patrick is Department Director at Comark. Since 2017, he has been directly involved in the management and supervision of service projects for various customers from the automotive, embedded, and certifications areas of expertise. He has a strong technical background in quality assurance. And finally, we have Kristoff Vladorczyk. Kristoff is a senior software developer at Comark. He has been with Comark for 12 years, and for most of that time, he has been involved in development and support of tools for certification testing for several worldwide certification organizations. He's currently responsible for development of certification testing tools for FIRA. And one more note for those who are just joining us, um, we'll have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please submit any questions you have directed towards the speakers down there. We're now ready to start our presentations. I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Arda Von Tirani from FIRA Consortium. Ardavan, you're muted. Hello, my name is Ardavan Tehrani, and I will provide a brief introduction to FIRA Consortium. After that, uh, my FIRA colleague Mitch will give you an overview of FIRA certification program. Let me start first by an overview of uh, FIRA memberships. Uh, FIRA today has more than 100 members. Uh, the key stakeholders are chip manufacturers, device manufacturers, system integrators, um, test tool developers, and test labs. FIRA um, also has many prominent companies as sponsor members, uh, which include Apple, Google, Corvo, NXP, Samsung, just to name a few. FIRA's vision is to provide a seamless user experience using secure fine ranging and position capabilities of interoperable UWB technologies. And the vision is to develop use cases for UWB and guarantee interoperability. Um, and this is provided by providing um, missing blocks for a broad UWB ecosystem deployment. 
in order to accomplish the mission, FIRA is developing use cases based on IEEE 802.15.4. Um, FIRA is also developing specifications and certification programs to ensure interoperability among chipsets, devices, and solutions. FIRA is also promoting UWB ecosystems to enable new business opportunities, which deliver better user experience. And by doing all that, FIR is hoping to establish the consortium as the reliable and trusted UWB technology brand uh, that is adopted by the market. Here, um, there is a figure showing the relationship of FIRA with respect to 802.14.4 compared to other similar organizations, for example, um, Wi-Fi Alliance is built upon eight, IEEE 802.11 or Bluetooth SIG is developed um, based on IEEE 802.15.1, similar to Zigbee Alliance and NFC4. So in order to drive interoperability, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, FIRA is building on existing IEEE standards. So here on the left side, you see the um, IEEE 802.15.4, uh, which the specification covers the Mac layer and the file layer. And the components covered by the IEEE um, standard are enhanced UWB file and Mac, which includes coding and preambles, uh, improved integrity and accuracy information elements. And also it covers multiple ranging methods. And so on the right side, you would see what is uh, FIRA developing on top of the IEEE Mac and file layer, which are additional layers, including application layer and services layers, and also a security layer that spans across all, all these, um, uh, all these uh, different protocol layers. And um, at the top with the services layer, FIRA is developing service specific protocols for multiple verticals. And at the application layer, FIRA is developing mechanisms which are not covered in the IEEE scope. Uh, that includes um, discovering UW devices, um, how to configure devices in an interoperable manner, and also specifications for interoperability security requirements. And at the Mac layer and file layer, FIRA is developing interoperability standards, which include profile features among FIRA Mac, performance requirements, test methods and procedures, and a certification program, um, which is a subject that is going to be covered by Mitch. Here I have an overview of FIRA UWB use cases. I'm not going to go into details of all of these use cases, um, but um, just to mention that FIRA is developing use cases that the specifications are built around them. And um, those use cases are categorized or classified in four, um, four different um, categories, which include smart city and mobility, smart building and industrial, smart retail, and smart home and consumers. Examples of some of these use cases are residential access control, point and trigger uh, controller apps. Under smart building and industrial, there is the social distancing, asset tracking uh, examples, and other smart cities and mobility, indoor navigation is, is a common use case. So in order to achieve its goals and missions, FIRA has built an organization. Um, here is a diagram of the FIRA's organization structure. At the top, there is the board of directors, um, which is mainly responsible with, for the strategic direction and final approval of the specifications and the budget. Um, there, there are a few officers who are supporting the board. There is also a legal counsel, which advises the board on the legal matters. 
there is the management steering committee, which um, includes co-chairs of the working groups, um, which are more involved with day-to-day -day activities of, of the organization. At the technical level, FIRA has five working groups. The requirement working group, which covers new use cases, developing new use cases and their requirements. Uh, there is a technical working group, which develops works on developing specification development. And uh, there is a marketing working group, which is mainly responsible with branding and PR and the website. And there's also the regulatory working group, which um, is working on policy development and regulatory issues with respect to ultra wideband. And there is the compliance and certification working group, which, um, which is working on um, developing test specifications, um, certification policies and procedures, and also managing the relationship with test labs. At this point, um, I would like to pass the a presentation to Mitch, who will go over the certification program. Sorry about that. It took me a second to figure out how to unmute myself. Uh, thank you, Artivan. Um, I'm Mitch Ketrick. And uh, I'm a certification program manager at the FIRA Consortium. Uh, the certification program is an essential element of FIRA's vision where UWB enabled smartphones from a variety of vendors can find location tags, securely unlock doors, and interact seamlessly with consumer electronics using FIRA certified UWB technology from any vendor. Interoperability across vendors is a key element to the growth of any open technology ecosystem. Uh, this slide may look familiar, but I just wanna to touch on a few points um, in addition to what Artivan already uh, mentioned. Uh, the first phase of FIRA certification program is aimed at driving interoperability between UWB devices to enable effective testing of the baseline capabilities needed by devices FIRA has built upon the IEEE standards 802.15.4 and the 4Z amendment by defining mechanisms that are beyond the scope of the IEEE standards. A device must pass all applicable MAC and PHY test cases to demonstrate that it conforms to the relevant FIRA certifications. This is a crucial foundational element in our drive for interoperability of UWB devices but it's only the first step. In the future, FIRA will offer service certifications, which will require certification of the FIRA common service management layer and service profiles. This includes an application layer, which allows the discovery of UWB devices and services and configures them in an interoperable manner. FIRA has developed technical requirements available to FIRA members that describe UWB protocols to be used in MAC and PHY conformance testing. Certification testing must be run on test platforms that have gone through FIRA's rigorous validation process. This ensures that the test platforms comply with the test requirements defined by FIRA. The current list of FIRA validated platforms is shown on this slide and can also be found on the FIRA website at the link shown. All FIRA certified devices will be tested against these requirements by independent authorized test laboratories using the FIRA device certification process. These test labs must meet FIRA's requirements and pass an on-site assessment prior to being authorized to conduct FIRA certification testing. The current list of authorized test labs is shown here and can be found on the FIRA website. We are in the process of authorizing additional test labs to provide testing services to FIRA members across the globe. FIRA has created a simple process for device certification. FIRA certification is only available to members of the FIRA consortium. So if you aren't already a member, step one is to join FIRA. 
Step two is to review the requirements for FERA certification and then to prepare for testing by providing key information about your device to the FERA certification body and selecting a test lab from the list of FERA authorized test labs. These test labs also provide pre-certification testing and debugging support if desired. Step three is to send your device to the chosen test lab for certification testing. The authorized test lab will execute the required certification testing using FERA validated test platforms. In step four, the test results will be provided to FERA, and if the device passes, you will pay the device certification listing fee and you will receive the certificate of conformance. Once the FERA certification mark license agreement has been signed, you can use the FERA certified logo on your device packaging, on your device, on your packaging, website, or any other material. And with your approval, FERA will add your device to the list of certified devices on the FERA website. To learn more about the FERA certification process, including answers to frequently asked questions, please visit the FERA website. If you cannot find the information you are looking for, you can contact me at the email address shown. I'd now like to pass it over to Eve Donnell uh, from Lightpoint, who's gonna give a presentation on the uh, FI conformance test tool. Hi everyone. I believe I'm unmuted, so that's good. Uh, thanks Mitch for the introduction. Um, my name is Yves Denel, and I'm a senior product marketing manager with um, Lightpoint. And I'm also a member of FURA's uh, marketing working group. So right before me, Mitch gave us a good introduction overview about uh, FURA's um, entire certification process. And as you saw, it includes several steps. It includes a physical layer conformance, MAC layer conformance, and interoperability testing. Um, in my presentation today, I'm going to focus more specifically on the physical layer aspects of the certification. So let me get started with my first slide. I wanted to give you an overview, if you're not familiar with Lightpoint, um, an introduction about our company, Lightpoint is a test and measurement company that's um, been around for over 20 years and we specialized in RF and physical layer testing of um, wireless connectivity technologies. So that includes UWB, of course, because that's the topic of today's presentation, but some of us may, uh, some of you may know us from the wireless, uh, the Wi Fi world of Bluetooth testing. Uh, we also have uh, cellular solutions for, for 5G and 4G, and many more. Um, our testers are used throughout the product uh, life cycle from uh, R&D where they're used in um, uh, for device uh, validation testing as well as certification. We also have uh, testers used in manufacturing where they're used for high volume production testing of UWB enabled devices. Um, I also wanted to point out here that uh, Lightpoint was amongst the first companies that joined the FURA consortium at its inception uh, in 2019, since we already had an extensive experience in UWB testing. Our test solution that you see here on your screen, the IQ gig UWB has been validated by FIRA to support all um, the uh, test cases that are defined in the FIRA FI conformance test specification, the test specification that Mitch be, uh, mentioned before me. This means that FIRA's authorized test labs, and Mitch also gave us uh, an overview of the current uh, authorized test lab list, 
they use our solution to run the file conformance part of the certification. To this day, Lightpoint solution is the only FIRA validated uh, tester for file conformance, and it supports 100% of the test cases that are currently defined in the FIRA specifications. Um, so an important point, and uh, Ardavan covered it at the very beginning of, uh, of his presentation, is one of FIRA's uh, mission and goal is to ensure this interoperable UWB ecosystem. And interoperability really starts by ensuring that FIRA certified devices are able to communicate at the file layer. That's the foundational step, the foundation that is necessary uh, to build this broad uh, interoperable ecosystem. And uh, for this purpose, uh, the technical working group and the CCWG working group have uh, defined five conformance test specifications. Um, and this is the document, I, I have a screenshot here. It's the document that defines all the test cases that verify UWB devices conformance to the FI requirements, uh, FIRA's FI requirements. So that means that for certification, the devices need to successfully pass all uh, the test cases that are documented in this document. Um, these documents include uh, transmitter tests and receiver tests. So the device under test will undergo both transmitter testing and receiver testing. The transmitter side uh, includes um, tests that validate the proper formatting of the UWB packets the UWB pulses shape, also the power spectrum density and mask, the carrier frequency and timing, as well as the um, a transmitter's quality, uh, signal quality metric. On the receiver side, uh, the conformance test validate the receiver's sensitivity. So that's a test that defines how low a, power, um, a signal power level can the receiver detect, and also the device's capability to detect improperly formatted packets. Um, this, call is called, this test is called the dirty packet test. Um, then there is also a test that looks at the first pass dynamic range. So that's an important test to ensure performance in a multi-pass environment. As I mentioned before, um, Lightpoint's IQGIG UWB platform supports all the tests uh, that we just viewed for the FIRA conformance, the FI conformance. Um, it is an integrated test platform. So it means that it contains both the signal generator that is used to test the receiver performance, the UWB's um, uh, device receiver performance, as well as a signal analyzer, which is the piece you need to test the UWB device's transmitter performance. So both of those are contained within the same tester. Um, and the tester supports really the frequency range for UWB's band group two channels. So that's like from roughly five gigahertz to over uh, 10 gigahertz. And it supports also all the bandwidth defined in the band group two for the IEEE. That means that we have um, an analysis bandwidth well over one gigahertz. So we can cover even the largest channels. Um, so, for um, the, 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 the transmission, the test provides a UWB waveform generation per IEEE standards. For the HRP5, we support for both uh, BPRF and HPRF modes. Um, it all also uh, um, supports all the parameter sets defined in FIRAS 5 requirements. Um, on the signal analysis uh, side, the tester supports um, all the measurements for all the IEEE-defined uh, specs, 
as well as those that are uh, defined in the FIRA test specs. Um, for those uh, doing uh, time of flight ranging and angle of arrival and performance testing, we also have uh, developed a um, um, trigger and response mechanism for both calibrating and validating uh, time of flight. And then I put here a couple of screen captures that show you um, uh, measurements um, that you would see on the graphical user interface of our tester. For example, the power spectrum density with the, the corresponding mask, as well as the pulses um, based on impulse response, as well as uh, the mask. So now we can look at um, the, the full uh, file conformance test tool architecture. Um, the PCTT, as it's called for short, and at, as it's defined in the FIRA uh, consortium specifications, um, provides both control and test interface for the UWB device under test. Uh, so Lightpoint solution is comprised of the UWB, IQGIG UWB, which we just talked about for testing the transmitter and receiver from the uh, UWB device under test. But we also have another piece, which is an automation software. And this part is used for the control and it runs on an external PC. Our automation software, we call it IQFact Plus, and it's a lightweight executable that runs on a, a PC and controls both the tester and the device under test. And it coordinates the, the, the full test suite and then retrieves the, the measurements from both devices and then provides the pass fail results for each one of the test cases. Um, so in order, um, important um, uh, information here, in order to control the dot, it uses something called the UCI interface. So UCI stands for UWB Command Interface. And it is defined in a FIRA specification as well. These test commands uh, need to be supported. These test UCI commands need to be supported by the DOT in order to go through the certification. Um, also, the physical connection uh, between the PCTT and the DOT is a VCOM interface, and there is also a FIRA document that specified the requirement there. So if uh, your, your DOT, your device under test, does uh, not support, um, is not natively supported, uh, UCI or the VCOM are not natively supported by your DOT, then uh, while you are going through the certification, you need to provide uh, a translation mechanism uh, so that the commands from the PCTT can be translated to control uh, the dot. And this uh, translation mechanism has to provide, be provided to the test labs for them to run the certification. Um, and now for the test interface itself, the dot antenna connectors are connected to the tester's port, either directly the transmitter and receiver, either directly to the tester or through an optional accessory. It's a light point accessory called the IQ5631. Um, and the IQ5631 provides configurable attenuation. Um, and this is needed for some test cases that require additional attenuation. For example, um, the, the sensitivity testing. Uh, the receiver sensitivity testing. So again, it's an optional accessory. If you have um, already pass loss, uh, uh, external pass loss in, in, in your um, test setup, then you don't need this accessory. And then you can connect directly to the tester without uh, going through the IQ5631. Um, so now the automation part, the IQFACT Plus software, I have a screen capture here that shows you um, that all the tests defined in the test specification are already pre-configured. And when you run this test, uh, the thresholds are already based on the FIRA specifications, which means that the automation software will provide a pass and fail result for each one of the test cases defined by FIRA. 
And also it will provide a detailed test logs for troubleshooting if that is something that is needed. And also the final test report is uh, then submitted by the test labs to FURA uh, in order to validate the certification uh, for the file layer conformance. So again, these are all the steps for the physical layer. We'll cover, uh, Comart will cover Mac and Interop later. Um, so I'm coming to the end of my presentation, but one important step that I wanted to remind everyone of is that only FIRA authorized test labs can submit this test report towards FIRA certification. Uh, but FIRA members can use the same test setup um, to pre-certify their device in their own lab prior to submitting them or to sending them uh, to the authorized test lab. Uh, beyond certification, uh, Lightpoint has a complete UWB test coverage, and that also uh, includes R&D solutions for uh, design validation testing in either in conducted mode or OTA, so in radiated mode, with offering for sh shielded chambers, antenna, a complete solution uh, there as well. Um, and then the, the same platform, I mentioned it earlier in my, in my presentation, the same platform can be deployed in manufacturing for mass production. And then we have um, chipset specific uh, automation solution that allow you to run uh, what we call multi-dot testing. It means you can have multiple parallel testing of multiple UWB devices uh, at the same time. And that's, again, that's for mass production. And we have uh, both valid, uh, measurement and calibration algorithms built in our automation software. Um, with that, I'm at my last slide. I wanted to point out that you'll have additional resources on our website. You can always contact us. We have experienced application engineers who can um, assist you in your uh, FIRA certification journey. And I am now handing over to Patrick from Comarch. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me properly. Uh, so, hello, my name is Patrick Stryczek, and I am Department Director in Comar, responsible more, uh, for certification and automation in uh, the automotive uh, industry uh, for professional services for those customers. So, today I would like to present Comar, the creator of Mac Conformance Test Tool and Interoperability Test Tool for FIRA UWB. Uh, a word about our company, uh, we have more than 30 years of experience gathered in thousands of projects on six continents. With more than 70 hundred highly qualified engineers, we support our customers in various industries. Uh, due to its size, Comarch, Comarch is divided into several sectors responsible for different areas of expertise. The one that we are part of is IoT sector. Uh, we are a relatively young unit as our history begins in 2006 uh, with supporting Nokia with embedded software development, connectivity and interoperability testing of their products. Thanks to successful cooperation with that brand, we have been recognized as a valuable partner for several different certification alliances, such as UPnP, Car Connectivity Consortium and OCF. Presence in Nokia introduced us also to automotive and consumer electronics clients. Our experiences enabled us to shape out our own IoT products, although to this day professional services remains a vast area of our business. <clears throat> On this slide, you can notice some of the biggest players in the certification market. It's worth noting that Comer contributed to their growth by delivering best certification systems and practices. Before we will move on to the technical details of Mac Conformance Test Tool, I would like to briefly talk about challenges that we faced during creating Test Tool for FIRA UWB standard. The main requirement was to create it efficiently and rapidly to enable the launch of certification programs in the shortest possible timescale. 
Conformance test tool had not only to be compliant with FIRA requirements, but also reliable, user-friendly, and easily deployable. Despite the early development stage of UWB standard and the hardware limitations, Comar was able to create complete MCTT solution consisting hardware and software, including a sample device acting as DUT. We can easily identify key factors that contributed to that success of this project. So first of all, fruitful and substantive cooperation with FIRA consortium, then experienced teams of technical specialists on both sides, uh, well-prepared and thought through certification program, and last but not least, relationship with Corvo, who supported us with hardware and technical expertise to make MCTT and ITT possible. Uh, now I, I would like to pass a voice to Krzysztof, who can go into details with, uh, with MCTT and ITT. Um, hello, my name is Krzysztof uh, Vlodarczyk and I'm a senior uh, software developer at, at Comar and I'm responsible for development of certification testing tools for FIRA. And for uh, the next couple of minutes, I would like to talk about uh, two testing solutions developed by Comar, which are, uh, which are used in the FIRA certification program. Um, the first of the uh, two solutions is, uh, is the MAC conformance test tool. Um, uh, the purpose of this test tool is to uh, verify uh, conformance of, uh, of the devices uh, with the uh, FIRA uh, requirements uh, for the MAC layer of the UWB communication. Um, the Architecture of the testing environment in MAC conformance testing consists of two main components. First is the MAC conformance test tool itself, uh, which is a set of software and hardware components uh, that allows execution of uh, FIRA MAC compliance test cases. And second is the device under test, which is the hardware that is uh, subject to testing. Um, the first software component of the uh, MAC conformance test tool, the MCTT in, in short, is the test framework. Um, this is uh, the core part of the architecture, uh, which, uh, which is uh, responsible for, uh, for the management of the process of testing that, that involves uh, discovery of the DUT, um, specifying the DUT's capabilities, uh, browsing and running tests against the DUT, and finally connecting uh, testing logs and uh, results. Um, the test framework is based on Comar generic solution for certification testing called the Comar Automated Test Framework, which I will uh, tell you more about in, in a minute. Um, the second so uh, software component uh, of the MCTT are the Python test scripts and the Python engine. Um, the test scripts are written in Python 3, and each of the test scripts uh, is an implementation of a single test scenario um, defined in the test specifications prepared by uh, the FIRA Compliance and Certification Working Group. Um, the, uh, a test script contains a um, series of test steps, which are defined in the test procedure of the corresponding test case in the test specification, and the number of checks uh, also defined in the test specification, um, each of which are uh, evaluated during the test execution and they all contribute to the final uh, result. The test cases in the FIRA MAC compliance, uh, in the FIRA MAC test specification, uh, are written in a very consistent way. Um, the benefit of that fact from the implementation standpoint uh, is uh, the possibility to define a common set of steps and checks, uh, which are uh, 
which can be used in, in multiple test cases. Um, that minimizes the code and uh, of a single test script to a series of calls, which are really easy to read and maintain since reading them uh, resembles reading uh, the text of the corresponding test procedure in the test specification. Um, the Comer Automated Test Framework automatically reads all the test scripts applicable to the DUT and allows to run them, uh, which comes down to simply execution of test scripts. Uh, the third component uh, of the MTT uh, is, is a piece of, uh, or maybe actually, uh, actually two pieces of hardware, uh, MCTT ranging devices. Uh, these are the, the, the devices manufactured by Comar. Mm, they take part in test scenarios in, in the FIRAMAC test specification, and they are referred there as MCTT1 and MCTT2. In short, uh, they simulate real FIRA devices that interact with the DUT in order to do ranging. Uh, additionally, the MCTT the ranging devices uh, capture UWB frames received from the DUT and pass them to the test script for, for analysis. Um, and uh, one additional component of the uh, of the architecture is the um, uh, is the test host, which is a Windows PC, uh, on which the the Mac conformance test tool application run, uh, and uh, the, the DUT is connected to the test host uh, using a serial connection over USB. And this communication is maintained to exchange uh, FIRA UCI protocol messages in order to send ranging configuration uh, to the device or to receive notifications. Um, CTT ranging devices are connected to the test house uh, exactly the same way as the, the DUT. Um, as I mentioned already, uh, the Comer Automated Test Framework is the core part of the MCTT. In fact, uh, it is a generic set of tools to facilitate uh, certification testing. Uh, Comer uh, has uh, extensive experience in certification testing, as you already heard from Patrick. Uh, so uh, after years of development of testing tools for various organizations, uh, we decided to create a solution that will uh, include all the functionality that is common in the majority of uh, certification testing tools. Uh, so our goal is to shorten the time that it takes for a certification organization to start the certification process um, by offering a solution that is ready to use uh, after a minimum amount of adjustments. And the framework uh, is designed to be modular, uh, uh, so it can be customized uh, via plugins, uh, so it's easy to adjust it to customer needs. Um, the framework can also be provided to, to the customer also as a white label solution. Um, now I will uh, briefly go over the uh, features of the uh, MCTT. Uh, first, uh, the discovery of the DUT and specifying the DUT's capabilities. And here um, you can see on the slide, uh, uh, the COM port of the DUT uh, needs to be selected and the path to a JSON file called PIX needs to be provided. Uh, this part of Comar Automated Test Framework has been uh, customized for FIRA as a plugin for the DUT selection. Uh, next features are related to browsing and running tests against the DUT. Um, the hierarchy of test cases grouped by category uh, is displayed on the left-hand side of the window. And the information on the currently selected test case is displayed on the upper right-hand side of the window. And the selection of tests to be run can be done directly on the lists of test items. Uh, 
Um, next, uh, uh, next feature is the is re related to collecting test logs and uh, results. Um, while tests are executing, live logs are displayed, and uh, each log entry is assigned a logging level. Logging levels can be switched on and off. And after tests finish executing, uh, the results are saved to a file. And the Comer Automated Framework comes with, uh, uh, with the Result Viewer application, which allows to open log files saved uh, previously in the MCTT. Uh, and the log files may contain uh, multiple test runs for the same duty. And the Result Viewer shows the information on each of these test runs. And the log entries for a single test case can be viewed the same way as in the main MCTT application. Um, the result viewer also uh, shows the information about the Python files that were used in testing, um, along with the information if the the files were uh, were, were genuine, and. Uh, also, uh, the result viewer allows to check if the entire log file hasn't been tampered with. Um, the, the last feature I'm, I'm going to mention is the, uh, the command line application, uh, which, is, uh, which uh, allows continuous integration. Uh, it allows to, uh, to run the test cases uh, and produce test logs exactly the same way as in the MCTT application, but without any user interaction. Um, Comar uh, has developed a product called uh, the sample device set um, that can be used uh, instead of a real DUT. Uh, the sample device set consists of two devices. Uh, first, the gold device, which is the device that passes all the test cases in the MCTT, and the red device, uh, which is similar to the gold device, but uh, additionally can be configured to exhibit uh, invalid behavior of specific VR features. Um, configured this way, the sample device uh, red uh, will fail test cases that verify corresponding features. Um, the sample device set might be useful in certain situations. Um, for example, for a FIRA device vendor who do not yet have a fully working device and they would like to run tests and see how positive results look like and how running tests look like. Um, for a, uh, also for a, a FIRA authorized test labs, in order to learn in practice how to test devices in MCTT and how to identify errors, uh, failures in, uh, in test logs uh, and so on. Um, so now I'm gonna move on to the interoperability test tool, which is the second testing solution developed by Comar uh, uh, that is using the FIRA certification program. Uh, the purpose of this test tool is to verify the uh, to verify um, if the DUT is able to interact with other uh, FIRA devices uh, seamlessly. Um, the test environment in the testing interoperability is similar to the test environment in testing Mac conformance. So the easiest way to describe the architecture of the ITT will be to compare it to the architecture of MCTT. Um, so the similarities are uh, the DUT, which is uh, by definition the, exactly the same as, uh, as in MCTT. Uh, the DUT uh, configuration file, the PIX file, and the uh, and the Comar automated test framework, which is the um, the core of the application. Um, so, what are the differences? Uh, there is uh, only one hardware component of the interoperability test tool called the ITT device, and unlike the MTTT ranging device, the ITT device does not take part in ranging 
but rather uh, serves a role uh, of an uh, UWB sniffer that knows the ranging message, message schedule and listens to all uh, frames which are expected to be transmitted in the uh, ranging session. Instead of interacting with MCTT ranging devices, the DUT interacts with uh, reference devices. And the reference devices are connected to the test host uh, the same way as the DUT. Um, the ITT includes uh, different test scripts. However, uh, the test scenarios are very similar. The key difference here is the use of up to eight reference devices instead of uh, two, two MCTT ranging devices. Um, as I mentioned before, the ITT is based on automated test framework. Uh, all main features of ITT are exactly the same as in MCTT. Uh, there is only one difference. Uh, the DUT selection has one additional stage, uh, the selection of reference devices. Uh, and here you can see uh, the list of all COM ports is displayed and up to eight reference devices can be selected. And for each of those reference devices, a uh, corresponding PIX file um, needs to be provided. Um, Comar offers uh, the Comar FIRA device that can be used in the inter interoperability test tool in place of a real reference device. The offered device is not a certified FIRA device, so it cannot be used in official testing. However, in, it might be useful in certain situations. Uh, for a FIRA uh, device vendor, uh, who do not have access to reference devices, but they would like to uh, run ITT tests themselves against their device, yet before the device is submitted to an ATL for testing. And for FIRA authorized test labs, um, in order to learn in practice how to test devices in ITT. Um, so that concludes uh, the section on the uh, on the MCTT and ITT. So I will uh, pass the voice to back to Patrick. Okay, it's once again me. Uh, so uh, our ultimate goal here is to popularize FIRA UWB standard by simplifying the certification process. By co-creating certification tools and keeping up with the technological development, Comarch shapes out its own IoT solutions and remains a valuable partner for our professional services customers whose products can reach the market faster. Thank you for, for your attention and uh, I'm passing my voice to other one. Thank you, Patrick and Christoph. Hello again. At closing, um, we wanted to share that the latest FIRA annual report um, of 2021 is published and is available on FIRA website. Uh, the report covers the latest status of FIRA activities and an overview of uh, UWB market. I encourage you to access the report to learn more about FIRA. Um, we would also like to invite you to join FIRA if you're not already a member. Um, in order to learn more about FIRA membership, you may visit the uh, FIRA website at firaconsortium.org. Uh, participating in uh, FIRA provides member companies the opportunity to directly engage in creating a broad UWB ecosystem that will benefit all members. Um, I also wanted to note that the certification program is available only to FIRA members. So that is another benefit of the membership. So at the end, I um, would like to thank you for joining this webinar and I will now hand over to Adrian um, 
for the Q&A session. Thank you. All right, we'll direct it to um, some questions now for a second. I'll pop all of our panelists up on the screen. It looks like we have one. Um, what is the rough cost estimation of Fiera conformance test setup, uh, the license for tools and hardware? And it seems like Mitch is going to answer this one for us. Sorry about that. My mute button changes <laughs> when I start displaying. Um, yeah, so for the cost of the, the test tools, obviously we can't give pricing over the phone. It depends on your area, uh, currency, conversion, and all of that. But if you go to the FIRA website, uh, under the certification section, you'll see a, a listing of all the certified, or, or sorry, validated test platforms. And currently we have the three listed there. If you want to copy down the email addresses, you can send an email directly to Comark or Lightpoint and ask them for pricing information and uh, you'll be able to get uh, the details that you're looking for. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, um, Eve, Eve, Patrick, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, absolutely. Contact us and we'll provide that information. Exactly. All righty, that sounds good. Um, any other questions that we had, we'll go ahead and answer. We'll follow up via email following the webinar. Um, with that, let me get this guy up. All righty. Well, thank you to everyone for your questions. And now we'll go ahead and conclude the webinar for today. If our speakers did not get the chance to answer your questions live, they will get back to you shortly through the contact information you provided during registration. Goodbye, everybody. And thanks again for joining us today.